All right, now we're gonna start assembling our sedum. Now I, what I've got here is I've got a little layout just to help me plan all of my leaves, where all of my leaves go. Now my arrangement had seven stems and they had um, between 10 and 16 leaf A and then between four and six leaf B per stem. So um, what I did is I made layouts for each of my stems and that just helped me to kind of switch them around and move them around um, to make sure that I have a nice variety of color in each of my stems. Um, and I also, I followed a similar pattern in all of them. I started at the top with just the green ones and then I slowly moved down to orange as I went. So I started with green and then green and light orange and then green and dark orange and then just the orange. And then when I got to leaf A, I kind of followed that same thing. So there's, there's, um, green and light orange, green and dark orange, and then just orange. So uh, it doesn't really matter, that's just what I chose to do for mine. And you can kind of shuffle your leaves around um, as you're looking at all your layouts to see um, if you like the uh, number in each stem. But honestly, it's not going to matter a great deal. Okay, now for the actual assembly, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different this time. Um, I wanted, I'm doing this mostly because I wanted to offer another idea. I wanted to kind of get the creative juices flowing and as to what other things are possible in French beading. I don't really like flossing stems, um, and, but floral tape finish, you know, isn't very pretty looking sometimes. So I wanted to do, to show you guys that there's uh, other things that you can try. And I'm going to be using wire to wrap my stems. Um, now, I'm, gonna, I'm working with a 28-gauge uh, wire, the same one that I use to make my leaves, but you could also use a 30-gauge. If you use 26-gauge to make your leaves, you can use that to wrap your stems if you want. It might look a little bit thicker, um, but if that doesn't bother you, then you can go ahead and try that as well. All right, so I'm, I've still got my 28-gauge wire attached to my spool. I'm not going to cut any of that off because I don't want to run out of any wire. And I'm going to start at the top with the first two leaves. So these should be leaf A. And I took my layout apart just to make them easier to grab, but follow the pattern that you decided for your layouts. And I'm gonna kind of bend my leaves at a little bit of an angle and put their stems together in the middle. And then I'm gonna take my assembly wire and I'm gonna lay a tail of it down against that stem and then kind of pinch close up to the top of the leaf or the bottom of the leaves to hold that wire in place because that's where we're going to start wrapping. And as we wrap, we're going to cover over that tail wire to secure the end. All right, so I'm going to use this wire and I'm going to wrap them tightly together. Make sure that they get really close together as you're wrapping. And I'm just going to continue down this stem. Now, the thing with wire wrapping the stem is that you want to make sure that your wire um, wraps are beside each other and not um, building up on top of each other to make extra lumps. So I'm going to wrap down about a quarter of an inch. And I'm holding all of my stem wires below very still. I don't want them to start twisting around each other. Alright, so I've got down about a quarter of an inch and I'm ready to add in my next set of leaves. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna alternate sides. If this is left and right here, then I want my next set of leaves to be on the front and back side. So uh, you can either turn it and then add them left and right or just uh, put one on the front and one on the back. And I am at, oops, I am adding um, two at a time here. You don't need to do one at a time. All right, so you see that that one's left and right and this one's front and back. All right, now I'm gonna wrap those on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull tightly to make sure that those leaves are snug against the stem. And I'm gonna continue wrapping down. Now as we go, our stem is gonna get thicker in the center and that's why um, I didn't use a separate stem wire in the center. Normally with French beading, you would have a separate stem in the middle to help support the plant. But these are very lightweight. They don't really need a lot of support. And I wanted them to be really bendy. And I'll show you that after we finish the assembling this little stem. All right, so I wrapped down about, about another quarter inch there. 
Um, I'm not really going to measure it. I'm just going to eyeball it because it's not really that big of a deal that it be perfect. And I'm going to add in the next two leaves that I used for my layout. And then, so we're going to go back to left and right. So we had left and right, front and back, and then we're going to do left and right again. So these two are going to be like this. And wrap those tightly on. All right, now that looks about a quarter of an inch to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my next one. Of course, left and right, front and back, left and right, so this next one is gonna be front and back. All right, now after the last set of leaves, we're gonna continue um, wrapping down about an inch or so. If you ever do have any gaps between your coils, you should be able to kind of push up on the bottom to kind of tighten them up. So if you notice any gaps forming, just kind of push up on the bottom coil. All right, that's close enough, that should be fine. All right, now to, and to end my wire, I'm actually just gonna twist it together with all of these wires below. So I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna twist all of my wires at the bottom together. And then, oops, and then I can cut off of my spool. Okay. So the reason why I assembled it this way is I wanted my stems to be bendy and poseable. So now you can go through and kind of contort them a little bit into whatever shape you want. And that's a little bit harder to do if you have a thicker stem wire in the center. All right, for this next part, we're actually going to put a little tiny bit of a thicker stem wire down at the bottom, just on the part of the stem that's gonna be inside the vase. Cause these stem wires can't really poke through um, clay very well, even if you've pre-poked a hole, um, it kind of mangles up the stem. So we're gonna put a little tiny bit of a stem wire uh, just below. So I started with a 16 gauge florist stem wire. Um, it's They're made out of steel. And you probably could use an 18 gauge if that's what you have on hand. We just need something a little bit sturdier to get through the clay. So I wrapped that first with floral tape and then I cut um, them into smaller pieces. Now, uh, the, the size you need is going to depend on the pot that you're using. My pot is only about two inches deep, so I didn't need a very long stem. So we're just going to attach this uh, right below the last coil of wire on our stem. And we'll just do that with floral tape. Now, this stem wire should not be visible in the finished uh, plant. It should be down um, pretty much to the bottom of the, or the top of the clay and then we cover over with rocks, so it shouldn't be um, very visible in a finished plant. All right, and then I'm gonna cut off any of those little tiny bits at the bottom that I don't need. All right, so let's go over really quickly um, the other stems that I made for my arrangement. Now there are, there are a variety of sizes, a different variety of heights and mixtures of colors. Um, and I did that because it looks a little bit more natural. If they're all the exact same height, it's not gonna be very fun to look at. It gives you a little bit more to play with as far as shape and texture and movement in your piece. So a variety of sizes, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you um, which ones that I put in all of my stems. So these stems here, I have um, 10A and 4B on each. And then I had one where I used 11A and 5B. And uh, there was one with 12A and 4B. And then one with 14A and 4B. 
one with 14A and 6B, and then the longest one had 16A and 6B. Okay, I know some of you guys are not gonna like working with the wire assembly, so I wanna show you another option. You can assemble this using just embroidery floss. Now I'm gonna be working with uh, just a regular six strand DMC floss, and the closest color that I had on hand to my wire, I wanted to match it as close as I could to my wire. The one that I had um, in my drawer already that uh, was the closest was 370. Now there might be a better one out there, um, and that's fine. I kind of wish it was almost a little bit lighter, but it's kind of a greeny goldy color. Okay, so I cut two feet, about two feet of that off of my skein. Uh, cut a little bit more the first time you do it, just in case you use a little bit more thread than me. And I am also making the smaller one, so if you're making uh, one of the longer length of stems, you'll need a little bit more floss for that. Okay, so we're, the steps are basically the same. We're gonna take those first two leaves and put them together in the center. And then we're gonna take a little tail of our floss and put it down against the stem. And then as we wrap, we're gonna wrap down over that tail of floss and that's gonna secure it. So I'm gonna pinch up at the top right below those leaves so that my floss starts right there underneath my leaves. And the thing with floss is that you need to untwist it. it these six strands of thread kind of are twisted together a little bit. So you need to untwist it to make that, that thread flat, all six of those strands to lay flat beside each other and then wrap and you get a much nicer smoother finish on your wrap if you do that. So we're going to wrap down. It does go a little bit faster with the floss, about a quarter of an inch and then we're going to do the same thing. We've got left right so now we need to go front and back. Just add in two at a time. And then make sure your floss is untwisted and keep going. Now the thing about the floss is you're untwisting, it's actually gonna super twist at the end and that's why I took it off of my skein is so that I can undo that super twist. I'm just kind of running my finger down the length um, to kind of undo the super twist that happens at the other end. So untwist and wrap. And I'm gonna try not to overlap my thread too much because I don't want it to be too thick. Oop, I don't want it to be too thick. And if you do ever need to stop flossing to add something in, I usually put my finger on the back to hold that floss in because as you saw just a couple seconds ago, it kind of came undone on me a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna add in the next one. Or the next two actually. And then wrap them on, untwist my floss, and wrap down. I think I left a little bit more space there than I needed, but that's okay. I'm just going to go with it. Just call it natural variation. Okay, now to end floss, we're actually gonna tie a little knot around the stem. So what I do is I make a little loop on one side, wrap around the stem, and then go through the loop with the end of my floss. And that should be enough to secure your floss. And then of course, um, just like with the uh, wire wrap stem, you'll need to add um, a little 16 gauge wire down below.